Here's some basic tips for living on the road. First off, never drive at night. Animals come out at night and you can't see them before it's often too late. And, you know, we've all blown past an animal and thought, wow, if that animal would have ran in front of me, I would have hit him. Drivers are more likely to be drunk at night. Other drivers, including yourself, are more likely to be overtired and fall asleep at the wheel. You know, it's just it's just safer to drive during the day. You should probably carry more than one method of cooking food. I personally have an evacuated solar tube, which is infinitely more effective than a regular solar cooker because it'll work on a cloudy day. Uh, I also carry a propane stove. Uh, at times, I've been known to make an actual fire and have a tin foil tinder that way, so carry adequate matches, lighters, some tinder, you know, that kind of stuff. You'll also figure out pretty quick that uh, it's pretty hard to shower regularly on the road. So, you know, past seven days, the human body doesn't get any dirtier, despite what culture may tell you. So you're not actually all that filthy. I recommend carrying some baby wipes with you if you feel the need to keep certain parts of yourself clean, like your feet, you know, because your feet will stink. The only other area that bothered me was my hair and my scalp. You know, it got pretty flaky, pretty nasty, dusty. So you'll want to clean that out, you know, once a week or whenever you feel like it. I recommend you don't camp near a main road. If you're on the forestry or BLM land, any public lands, you're going to want to get off of the off of a main road so that you don't have a bunch of guys on their dirt bikes ripping by or quads, you know, dusting you out and uh, making a lot of racket and otherwise just being annoying. You also want to consider what part of crown land you're camping in. If there's a lot of hunting going on in the area, you want to be aware and you don't want to be sneaking around at dusk and dawn looking like an animal because you might catch a bullet. When you park your vehicle, you want to consider the layout, you know, have your vehicle in a position so you can drive out easily if need be and don't park too close major hazards like a cliff you might fall down it for some unknown reason so you know stay 40 60 feet back water in some arid places can be an issue you know you think you could uh, carry a, a pump and just purify it but places like arizona that there simply is no water to purify so you're going to be buying your water. I recommend you have a large water tank in your vehicle or a large refillable thing that you can just take into a grocery store and fill there. Don't waste your food. If you're going to buy it, make sure you eat it all. Even if you don't like it, make sure you eat it all because when you're out pretty far in remote areas, your choices are going to be limited and you're not going to necessarily going to be able to just oh just drive into town and get some more food you might be uh, 60 miles from the nearest town that won't even have fresh produce some dollar stores in the states have frozen food and dairy sections but uh, they'll never have fresh produce so keep that in mind If you decide to go prospecting or hiking and you're out in the hills, basically anywhere that's off a road, be very careful where you step. If the surface is not flat, if it's uneven in any way, be very mindful of where you're stepping because a rock will easily roll from under your foot. You could break your ankle, twist your ankle, or, you know, just in general, you could fall on your face if the rocks slip out from underneath of you so don't be rushing around take very slow deliberate steps and uh, concentrate on what you're doing if it happens to be hiking back down a hill or up a hill so you don't fall and hurt yourself some vegetation in areas of arid parts of the states can be quite painful if you encounter them directly like cactus they have 
inch and a quarter long spikes, thorns on them. Uh, those can be quite painful if you run into them on a prickly pear. Another another plant you got to watch out for is basically anything with thorns or, or hook thorns. Those are the worst because they'll, as you walk past the plant, the barbs will hook your flesh. And if you're unlucky, it'll rip the flesh and break off in your flesh, which happened to me, which was very painful and took a long time to get the barb out. Quite literally, it'll just rip your pant leg right open. So don't push through the bushes. Try and go around. I recommend you carry a two to three week supply of clothing to minimize your trips to the laundry. Doing laundry is not very expensive, but it's kind of a hassle, especially if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you gotta go back into town or you know, try and work it into your in your route as you go to stop at a laundry when you pass through a town. Most even little towns will have a laundromat, a coin operated one. Carry a solar panel with you to charge your electronics, or you can have a little windmill set that up. It actually can get quite breezy in certain areas of Arizona, so a windmill would work. I have uh, a couple of light fall jackets, so if need be, you can double them up. Uh, carry a hat, a couple of, you know, a toque. If you're out hiking, you're going to need two full army canteens worth of water for heavy hiking and digging. That should be adequate for the winter months in Arizona. You're probably going to need a heck of a lot more in the fall and summer months, but uh, two canteens was adequate for a full day of hard hiking and digging for me. I recommend that you carry some entertainment with you of some kind, you know, whether it be a video game console or some games on your tablet, a couple of TV shows you've never seen lined up to watch, you know, but don't spend all your time doing that, but have some form of entertainment like old time radio shows, because in spite of what I thought, I thought, oh, I'll just get out there and I'll just write in the evening. I'll just write. Well, you're not going to feel like it. Have backup plans because in the winter months, it gets dark at between 5.30 and 6 p.m. And then you got to have something to do for those three hours before you have a go to bed early. Uh, carry some books, a couple of books. Those are always nice. Crossword puzzles, those are nice too. Be meticulous when it comes to coming in and out of your sleeping space. Don't do certain activities back there. Don't cook. Be very careful if you're going to eat back there. Don't change out of your dusty, dirty clothes on your bed or try and keep contaminants out of all kinds of places, you know. Uh, keep yourself hygienic to a certain extent so that you don't get sick.